The image I'm going to work on today is a wooded path, and we'll try to get that sense of going uh, back into a distance. And as we've talked about before, what is closest to us is sharper uh, in its edges and darker, and what is uh, appears to be in the background is lighter and uh, the edges are much more indistinct and that's what gives the sense of uh, going into distance. Um, so to begin this, I, as always, I always want to break down the image into its largest shapes. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One is to use a filter like this. This is a, um, well, we used to call it ruby lith. It's just a, I think now it's called a filter. Uh, photographers use it. It's a plastic uh, red. And I just taped it over um, an old slide frame. Uh, the slides I don't use so much anymore, so I took them out and I keep the frames. So when this is when an image is looked at, or even um, live, uh, uh, looking at uh, real life, um, it knocks out a lot of the color and the confusion that color seems to give us, and we see much more pure tone. You can see the detail is kind of lost there, and it's a good way to assess how to begin a drawing of any kind, still life or landscape, what we would be aiming for is to, now I did this in Photoshop, is to reduce the image into its biggest shape so that we don't lose the forest for the trees, so to speak. So having looked at that and assessed, I see sort of three big shapes. One is this light area, and then a mid-tone, what's called a mid-tone, in between the light and the dark, and then this big dark area, and that's what gives it its sort of tunnel effect. So to begin the drawing, I would, um, because I'm in love with these Prisma sticks, I would probably go in and just define the area I want to work, a, a, a rough vertical rectangle here. And I'm not gonna worry too much about putting the bottom in here because as I go along, I might go a little down a little bit further, but I'm delineating how wide I want it to be. I'm not gonna go any wider than that. And that's pretty close to the proportions of that rectangle, so I'm satisfied with that. Then I would go in and put in those big shapes that I saw. So I'm noticing that the, this point is a little bit lower than halfway down the page. So I'm just gonna put a little mark there. And this is kind of my road map. And then these, um, I'm noticing that this is about in thirds. Well, that's a little skimpy third, but I'm going to mark that as well. So as I say, this is a road map. I'm not getting detailed here. I'm just wanting to look at the big shapes and get those down so that I don't go into detail and lose these nice big shapes. So I'm going very light, of course. You can see how lightly I've gone because I want to work over it and if I need to erase something to adjust it, I want to be able to do that. Another way to do that, of course, would be with a, a, a standard um, colored pencil. And I would, at this point, I would use it on its side to get these big shapes in. And then I want to get some tone in. And I'm going to go a little bit darker just so you can see 
but I would keep it this light at this stage. But I want to get um, tone in, and I'm going to keep this area completely white. Now it has a little bit of a sort of bluish grayish, grayish look if you compare it that to the actual white of the paper, but I am going to leave it white. And uh, in the end, if I so choose, I can go in and put tone in there, but I would le rather leave it white right now and have that option. So I would go in then if I was using a Prismacolor pencil and use the side so I can get toned down quickly. And again, I would go very lightly with this because I want to layer my colors when I get to doing more detail. And if I go too dark now, I won't be have much layering capability. So once I get that big shape in, then I would go in and do some detail as we did before because I want this background area to be very soft and very indistinct and because I love detail I'm afraid if I went in and did that first I would get uh, very um, serious about those shapes and edges and then it wouldn't have its soft effect so I'm going to start in the front and then I'll be able to sort of compare the distinctness of what I do in this area with the softness of what I do in the back so this is one that I worked on earlier. And you can see I've left this area very soft and very indistinct. And I may not even get any more detailed than that because I'm already liking the comparison of these dark edges and shapes against that light background. And then as I went in with the trees, in the uh, sort of mid-ground, their uh, 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 intensity is a little bit between this and the light. So I, um, I got those colors by layering, oops, let's see them. Uh, I went in with a reddish brown. I'm staying away from the browns because um, there's nothing wrong with brown, but, but trees aren't really brown. They're sort of a mixture of lots of different colors, and they look more lively if we stay away from the brown, at least in the beginning. And it's, definitely I would stay away from the black, because otherwise you could end up with a very monochromatic brown and green drawing. This way, um, I have some really nice, lively colors going on in there. So I began in the front with this. This is a sort of reddish um, earth tone. And I used uh, the green, which is, oh, I'm holding it. Um, now, uh, green and red make brown, but it's a livelier brown to mix it that way. And then I went in with some blue some darker blue because that will deepen it. Also, I forgot to mention this back here is a mixture of a yellowish green and a sort of turquoisey blue because I see a lot of blue in that background. Anyway, I just kept layering and when I got up in this part, kept it very soft, kept those edges very indistinct and it's what gives this sense of going back into space. And when I get to the ground here, this is very green and this is very reddish, brownish. So again, I would um, go in and get the broad color and keep it very indistinct back in that area. And I think I would probably cover the whole thing with this greenish and then go in in the foreground. Now those are leaves, so I don't want to I don't want to draw each individual leaf, so I would try to get some 
texture going on here. And as you see, it gets darker, darker and darker and more distinct down in here and fuzzier, so to speak, as it goes back in there and lighter.